Hello everybody, my name is John Goodyear and I'm a level 2 Google Certified Educator. This presentation's really come about because of two reasons. One was a, a tweet from Craig Bakersville which said a free computer literacy course designed to prepare learners for the growing number of jobs that require basic digital skills. And my reply was you should see the websites that 79 year olds are building at Alden Primary School they could give a masterclass to businesses. Why? Because they are one of the few primary schools in Manchester giving children 21st century skills, working from Google Cloud daily. The other reason this came about, this presentation, was because of the recent Digital and Tech Summit, headed up by Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Greater Manchester. And a very important meeting, really, for Manchester and the region. And a bit of a mystery meeting, because... I don't think many many people knew it was going on, but hats off to everybody for making it possible and uh, a very important meeting to move the North West and Manchester forward. When I was going through some of the um, comments and some of the uh, reports of the summit, I came across this particularly interesting photograph. And the board says, how do we bridge the digital skills divide between education providers and industry? And if you sort of read between the lines, and, and I wasn't at the summit, so I don't know what I said before or after this uh, this um, this comment on the board, but it's almost saying that uh, education is failing industry by not providing the right digital skills. Well, I can almost tell you now that I, um, IT educators like myself are out there right now providing the right digital skills to children we're doing it right now we're not talking about it we're actually doing it so why would this comment be made in the first place is it a matter of perhaps attitude so let's take a quick look and just go back in time a little bit and you might say to yourself well what's father ted kicking bishop len brennan up the backside got to do with anything to do with a, a di digital and tech summit held in manchester recently Let's put some captions on and all will be revealed. Of course, Father Ted is actually London. And can you guess who Bishop Len Brennan is? This is Manchester. So in effect, what we've got here is London kicking Manchester up the backside. And they have been for decades. And let's face it, it's not just Manchester. It's anyone north of Watford. London is very insular and very selfish. And we've allowed them to get away with this for years so what is the reason why they've been managing to do this for such a long time and again perhaps it's an attitude problem i worked down in london for a while not a lot but i did work down there and certainly enough to pick up the sort of attitudes they had and the way they were keen to push things forward my role down there was to roll out new file service and new network infrastructure to refurbish schools so Subsequently, I had meetings with uh, head teachers, senior leadership teams in schools, the builders, and I think Southwest uh, Gridville Learning was at some of the meetings as well. And every time we suggested something, or a different way of working, or a different way of doing things, the response was always the same. It was one of, will it benefit the children? Will it benefit the school? Will it move us forward? And if the answer was yes, it was always, let's try it. So what do you think the response was up here in the North West, up here in Manchester, to the same sort of ideas and suggestions? Yes, you've guessed it. It was something like this. It's like, what is it again? Ugh. What does it do? Ugh. Can we just leave it for now? Which translated really means not interested, never will be. You know, ask yourself, are those attitudes still about today? Do some schools still think in the same way? This is my website. This is the front page of my website, and I do work in a few schools looking after school IT. But really, what I'm concentrating on now are two things. I'm concentrating on e-safety and cyberbullying events, and uh, I hold a really good um, sexting and fake news and radicalisation event aimed at primary schools. And I've been told by schools it's been held at it absolutely hits it right on. Um, it really does hit the mark and very different, a difficult subject to approach with, with primary schools as well. 
The other thing I do is cloud computing. I try to introduce Google's cloud platform into schools and I've spent the best part of 2017 trying to promote this and it's not been that successful really. A um, few schools are interested, a few forward lo uh, looking schools are interested but on the whole it's, it's not been that successful. And we've got to ask ourselves why? Why has it not been successful? Okay this is Albin Primary School and as the caption says Albin Primary School already in giving children 21st century skills along with some of the top 10 skills employers are looking for in 2017-2018. Hang on let me just rewind that back a bit. Are we actually saying we're giving primary school children the top 10 skills employers are looking for in 2017-2018. How can that be? When they leave school they're only 11 years old. Alvin Primary School are one of those schools that's been using Google Platform for quite a while now, about 18 months. And the next slide, this slide you're looking at now, comes from a much bigger presentation that the children are doing. Uh, hopefully to the uh, the Peace Foundation from Warrington um, sometime next year. And this group of children are called the D Digital Leaders. Now, this group of children, when I first started working with them about six months ago, just dealt along with um, looking after the IT suite, making sure computers worked and keyboards were all plugged in and headphones were plugged in, that, that sort of thing. And I'd realised that this was a bright bunch of children and they'd already been using Google Cloud for about a year, so they were already quite skilled. And I wondered if we could give these guys a really big project to do. And we sat down and we talked about it, and we decided what we were going to do was to do a big e-safety project. And to do this e-safety project, the children had to learn a whole set of new skills, and this is part of the presentation children will be doing next year. This is just one slide from that presentation. So the skills they needed to learn was some graphic design skills because we wanted to design all our graphics in-house. So I introduced them to some um, web-based graphic design tools and graphic design programs. And we wanted everything to run from the cloud because we needed it to run across different platforms. So we introduced them to some graphic design programs so as they could start to design and think about some really child-friendly e-safety and cyberbullying posters. The end result of this, um, this project was a website. We wanted to produce an e-safety website, a website uh, designed by children, for children. And the idea is we will publish this website and it will be available to <coughs> hundreds of other schools. Anyone who wants to have a look at the website and use the resources on there. So that would be the very, very end result. We wanted to market our ideas as well. And the children came up with some really fantastic ideas and they thought about merchandising. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to um, produce some merchandising that they could sell and the profit from that would go to charity. And that was a good way of promoting uh, what we were doing. And we needed to learn some business skills because if we were going to spend some money, we had to work out whether it would be effective and whether we could afford it. And also we had to work out whether what we were, we were buying we could sell and what sort of profit we were going to make out of it. So some business skills were really important. And in effect, what we were producing here, what I was doing with the children here, was almost like a new startup IT business. And have you noticed I've not mentioned some really important skills? I've not mentioned, for example, that you would need to be able to create and share files and folders. You would need to be able to work as teams. You would have to make some decisions. And you'd also be have to work collaboratively. You have to work all together. I've not mentioned any of those things. And the reason I've not mentioned any of those skills is because children have already been working from Google Cloud for about a year. So they already have those skills. Those really important digital skills they already had. Okay, I'm just going to drop out of this slideshow for a minute and just going to take you over to um, 
all in primary schools cloud platform and just give you a quick uh, rundown of some of the things that we're doing on there okay this is um, all in primary schools uh, google cloud platform at the moment and i've got um, google drive open it's not a video showing you how this is going to work it's just a quick overview of some of the things that we're doing and as you can see i've got a number of files and folders there and at the top i've got some quick access this is some of the stuff that i've been uh, accessing over the last few days as Sir uh, Google's rolled out new technology, we've introduced it into the schools. And one of the things we have introduced is Team Drives. So if I open up Team Drives, I've access currently. I've access to two Team Drives. I've got staff and I've got the uh, di digital leaders. Now this is a folder here where we have all our work on this current e safety project. Uh, the di digital leaders have their own drive and inside there like I say this is all their work so it contains a number of folders and again this is some of the recent files at the top um, the hashtag we stand together is a presentation that we're going to hopefully be doing next year we've got uh, the script for that we've got the merchandising costs and underneath there we've got a number of folders if you take a quick look inside one of the folders this is the hashtag we stand together folder and we've got our presentations in there our posters and some of our pictures that we'll probably be using some of our slideshows so as you can see um, children are well versed into using this technology now they can set these folders up and set the files up without even thinking about it if we ask them to do something they will just do it and as I was explaining previously one of the, the main um, results of running this uh, project is a website and this is the website that we've been working on um, it's not finished yet we're about a quarter of the way through this project but this will be the website that will hopefully be released out to other schools um, probably towards the summer time and as you can see it's all been primary school di digital leaders one-stop shop for e-safety and I'm pretty proud of this statement. That's something they've created, the children have created, because e safety and cyberbullying matters. It's our logo. So if you scroll down, you can see we've got some quick support links, and we've also got some um, links onto our safeguarding leads in the school. Um, just scroll back up to the top, as you can see, we've got. E safety, cyberbullying, sexting, and fake news. We possibly might be adding some more down there. We've got a parents page, we've got our team and about, and uh, we've also got a page for the hashtag We Stand Together. So we're supporting this campaign in um, Albany Primary School, a campaign run by the Peace Foundation in Warrington, and I think Greater Manchester Police are also involved. And this is the page that covers that one. Um, just some really good photographs. Got one child actually really, really good with the camera, and he's taken a lot of these photographs. Got the logos on there, what it's all about, and the children have created um, a slideshow to go along with this. And we've also got a link to the Tim Perry and Jonathan Ball Peace Foundation in Warrington. Um, that's a clickable link as well. So that's the website, um, and this is our. Um, team drive that we're currently using this project we're doing with um, with the children would be impossible to do unless they were running from a cloud platform the cloud pa platform pulls everything together and it's one place where we can store everything that we need and the most important thing is, is that all that all these documents all this work we're doing is avail then available from anywhere from any internet uh, internet connected device uh, that can run either a web browser or run some of the apps that we need to access um, Google's cloud platform very versatile and extremely powerful okay let me hop back to the presentation and we'll just carry on so here's the top 10 the top skills that employers are looking for in employees in 2017. This is the 2017 edition and I don't think it's going to change in 2018. And I have absolutely no doubt that all our digital leaders have got all those skills just by working on that project. 
And you've got to think the sea safety project they're doing at Alvin Primary School would be impossible to do without some sort of cloud platform to bolt it all and bring it all together. It would be impossible to do. And also Google Cloud offers them all the facilities to create everything they need, including the website. So without a doubt, they've got strong communication skills, got brilliant research skills, they've got computer skills by the bucket load. They're very flexible and um, they can adapt to doing all sorts of different things. They can sort of solve their own problems and being very creative. They're working as a team, doing their own planning, they're making their own decisions, they're organised and there's a certain amount of leadership there. I would also say that by the time our children at Albin Primary School get to year six, by the time they leave, I would say that most of them, just by working from the cloud and working that that a little bit differently with these 21st century skills I've probably got six to seven of the skills on that list and they're probably developing the rest of them just by working differently and just by working in a 21st century way so we know that Google Cloud is an excellent way to educate children and improve and improve their digital skills but what more, what more could be added to this? We realise that um, the skills gap, uh, particularly up here in the northwest, is quite big. And we need people like engineers, we need creative people, people who can create new ideas and new ways of working. And we think it would be really great if we could introduce some very simple electronics into primary schools and then get children to build some very simple projects, perhaps robotics or some something else. But something that works from their computer programs so there's nothing better than seeing your computer program that you've written controlling something externally and putting right your mistakes if it doesn't work to begin with so there these are two i think two very future important skills that children should be learning as well some very simple electronics and also some engineering some actually putting things together and getting them to work you can bring all that together bolt it onto google cloud as a clapity platform, some really important future skills you've got with our children in Manchester. So, you've all gone home, the summit's now finished, where do we go from here? And I guess you've gone back to your, wherever you are, universities or colleges or wherever you're actually working and you're talking about the next step forward. I'd like you just to come back to this slide and just answer some of the questions that was posed by this statement. How do we bridge the digital skills divide between education providers and industry? Well, one of the things we should be doing is using the skilled educators that are already in place. People like myself have already rolled out cloud computing to a number of schools, so we know the pitfalls. We also know how to get into a classroom and get children engaged. And we also know how to start to train staff on use of this new technology. We should make more use of schools like Aldwin Primary School as training centres or hubs. Uh, I'm also thinking of schools like Dowson Primary School, who have used cloud computing now for about four years, and also a primary school which will probably uh, come online in about 20, in 2018, early 2018, who are very, very keen to be a training centre and also a centre of excellence for cloud computing and are more than willing to invite people in so they can see the way they work and hold training sessions. We should offer school taster sessions and show them the benefits of using cloud computing. We should let children who are already using cloud computing help those who are not peer-to-peer -peer mentors. We should offer CPD days to schools it's important that we train staff, it's important they get the skills and it's a skill that they can now add to their CV, a very, very important 21st century skill that they can take forward to other schools. And importantly, we need to start early. Primary school is an ideal place to start to learn these life skills. A couple of other things really, and it's a, it's a bit of a moan I have to say. One thing that we, we need to do is change the way Ofsted marks school, schools' achievements. Ofsted should recognise and comment on schools that have a cloud platform installed and running 
as these schools are offering a very 21st century layer to children's education. The DfE at the moment are very, very keen to get schools onto some form of cloud computing platform and there are lots of reasons for that. You can go to their website, you can read what they say, but read between the lines and there's a lot of reasons why they want to do that. And if they want to do that, then they should be really having a word with Ofsted so as they can recognise the schools that are running cloud computing and mark them accordingly. So, we have some bold claims. Andy Burnham says, this is an incredible opportunity. My vision is for Greater Manchester to challenge neighbours in London, Bristol, Oxford and Cambridge to be the UK's leading digital city. I have gathered the brightest and most influential tech people here and together we will achieve that. That is great news. If that is possible, that is just great news for the North West and great news for Manchester. Among these incentives, he says, is a two million pound digital skills fund, and Andy wants to challenge tech businesses to boost this to eight million pounds. Great, absolutely brilliant. But I, I have to ask the question, and it's an important question to ask: How much of that money will come to education? After all, we are the starting point for digital life skills. And without some sort of funding, or without somewhere, some form of help, this could fail at step one. And we know, and you've seen by some of the things I've shown you in that video, some of the advantages and some of the skills that children have learned, particularly those that are in primary school, who are now doing a huge e-safety project, which would be impossible without some form of cloud platform. So we have to ask the question, how much will come to education? My name is John Goodyear. You can find me at 2010it.co.uk or you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll perhaps see you next time.